we have all had a period of time in our life when we study something, you know. Even your career may have been, and may, may, may have started out of your study, what you've become good at. So, from childhood we are learning, it's put before us to learn something, to eventually discover perhaps a particular subject that is appealing to you. We are always learning and studying, discovering how the world works, how certain kind of uh, instruments or tools and, you know, like this, to serve uh, our ideas, our inclinations, what we feel we are attracted to. But for many of you, life has brought you here, uh, to myself, we have come to meet. And uh, I myself am asking you, now you've studied so many things, so many things in life, not everything, nobody can study everything. Now I ask you to study yourself. Well, what does it mean? Of course, it's easy if I say, study a little bit about this land, or about the water flow, or about this, you know, the seasons, or so on, or about some instrument. Because you take yourself to be the one who is doing the studying, and you are in some way engaged with some objective pursuit to, to understand something, to gain more skill, to be able to uh, make use of your knowledge for some outcome. But you have come in search of truth, so I don't send you out, go and study the hill, study the water, study the fire anymore. See, study yourself. What it mean? How to study yourself? Is it one self studying another self? Is it a lower self studying, or learning about, observing, discovering a higher self? So how does one begin? You know, and of course. For many of you who have been following satsang for a time, you know, I don't feel that this question is out of place again. To refresh your looking, how does one study oneself? What is the oneself? Body you can study. I think there's a name for that. Human biology or medicine, you can study about the body and the body's system and function. You can study about the prana, the vital breath. The, you can study about your blood, your blood type. But these are not the one who is observing them. And then you say you can study your character, your character. How you study, how you observe your character. How do you, you know, when the ancient ones have said, "Know thyself," what are they speaking about? What is this self to know? And who will know it? Is it something apart from the self that will know it? Is it and there another self to know one self knowing another self? Is it like that? Well, if we put it to the mind and we are thinking like that, and of course it will feel, whoa, you know, it gets confusing. Who is studying who? Or what is studying what? But at all times you will have a natural sense of your own being. So let's start there. What is that? If all the people on the earth vanished, uh, you would know that you are still here. If all the thoughts that could come in the mind came and went, it would be you who observed them. Again, if all the thoughts, all the concepts that were perceivable would arise through your, your being, in your mind, uh, they would be noticed by something. That which notices them, is it the same as them? Well, we can look a bit more deeply. We may say, no, it cannot be the same. The one who is witnessing them, uh, is this one also witnessable? <sighs> that seemed to create some strange warp in the mind. Can the one who is seeing everything else, can this one be seen? Is there a one? And you're asked to look. And you know what? Just about that time, some laziness start to come up inside, some sort of resistance, some sort of justification of why we are doing all this thing. We know who we are already and all of this stuff. So you are appointed, you can observe this also. Even the resistances that is coming up to the question is also noticeable. The one who appears to be resisting, hmm, 
Is that really our self? Is that really you? How close is it? How close? If I say, you know, come close, we get very close, even centimeters close, when we touch, are we one even? Even if two things come together and they merge together, even their merging is also observed. So the point is not what you're seeing forward, but that whatever happens, it is perceived. And that which is perceiving it, where is that? Where is its location? Can it be said to be behind or in front or to the side or above or outside or inside even? So for this you must sit. And when I say sit, I simply mean be quiet with this. Can anything that you perceive, that you can say is studyable, meaning that you can observe it, its quality, its nature, its character, its weight, its size, its design, all of these things. But all of these are perceived also. From where does even the perceiving of them, even the, the perceiving of them is also, can we say, also perceived also. The very act of perceiving is also, there is an awareness of this. Look what is happening. Even the sense of yourself in memory, the very archiving of one's history and the sense of your place in the world, there's always there's an awareness even of that. What does it mean? It means that at the place of awareness, does awareness have any content? Our memory, our identity has content. But that which is aware of content, does that have any content? And who can receive this question? Is it a person, when even the person is perceivable? So these are the questions that come with the quest for awakening to the real. And I want to tell you ahead of time, no objective answer will satisfy you. It cannot be seen. That which perceives all things itself cannot be perceived. But I'm going to go subtler still. The mind itself is the first one to stand in the witness box to say, all these things I can perceive, all these things I can perceive, all that has shape and size and quality, it is I who perceive them. Time and change, it is I who perceive them. But then we say, isn't mind also perceived? And if mind is also perceived, you know, what is it that is perceiving them? I don't want a word or a conceptual answer. I want the, the question to become like a searchlight, scanning to see if an entity can be found as the weakness of anything. You see, So that's one of the pathways of um, self, self-awareness leads to self-awareness, you may just find that somehow all the questions just seem to nullify, or they just evaporate or disappear. And what is left is really nameless and shapeless. And curiously, uh, is self-aware, a sort of self-awareness field. This kind of introspection also grows inside its own power. It becomes more um, acute, much more tight and powerful. But all of it leads in, leading into a spaciousness, an intelligence, uh, uh, a deeper than a state, because states are also perceived. You see? And now someone may ask, well, what's the benefit of this? You see? And such a question can only come from the one again who wants to have some benefit. As you proceed in your inquiry, in your devotion, in your surrender, you are tasting the fruit of that surrender. And you will see along the steps, each step, you will realize, uh, you know, whoa, 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 I need to go more deeply. And it's not a trap, it's a freedom. The trap is behind what you're leaving. 
but you're moving more again, so to speak, back into your natural state. And you will not need someone to tell you this is natural. You see, just like if you are the only person around, if you are sick, you don't need someone else to tell you you are sick. You will know it. When you are happy, you don't need to know, am I happy? You are, you know. And they are, they are the same way. When you are free from the clutter of conceptual noise, you know it, and you know that it is natural. So, thank you. Good, good, good. Well, let's say that all contemplations, if they are true and successful, they come back to the Self, they come back to that awareness in which the, um, the conflicts that come with personhood, um, the, the doubts, the confusions, all of these, they are eradicated. And what is remain is just an awareness, an awareness is here. And in it, it feels like all all things find their place, whatever that may be. Even this body moving in space is 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 finding its place in, inside. Uh, all things are seen to be flowing um, in their natural in their natural place, uh, where even the sense of disorder. You know, is inside a greater order. Mm-hmm. This the sense of disharmony is, you know, is inside the great harmony. Yeah. You see. And even as one come to that recognition somehow, there is a silence, there is a stillness. Uh, there is a stillness which is not against movement. Mm-hmm. Movement is taking place; it's part of its expression. But inside the core of the movement is this emptiness, this silence, which is its source also. And this is mystery, you see, mm-hmm. because it, it is not merely. Some may say that it is not very scientific. It is pure science. Mm-hmm. When science reaches the very core of its origin. You know, it was. It's pure science. It's it's pure. It's the purest. Like the whole universe is built inside the most, the purest concept of God. Mm-hmm. It's the purest mind. Yes, but that which is even aware of the purity of mind cannot is the unnameable. You see, and it's no distance. It's not like if you go over there, you come closer to the to the to the unnameable. Yeah. You know, everything is unfolding through and in front of us. No, mm. to come finally to come to see that what really is here is the unnameable. Mm. You know, Bhaji, sometimes the the vibration of personhood mm. is kind of felt. You know, yes. And um, usually the mind quickly comes and says, "There's a sense. There's a sense of a problem." Yeah, yeah, when that when that is felt in the body, yeah. and that is fine because yeah. that is also an exercise that will perhaps be needed in the consciousness to exercise and to discern these things. Yeah. I find I'm okay with all of them, because the same one that in the body in which the sense of uh, some personal noise or energy manifests, and the one also who feels troubled by it, they're all together part of this dance of the yeah. the manifest consciousness. So knowing that. They say it's taken care of. Who? Why to bring in now an eye to be troubled about it? Is it like this, no? Yeah. But uh, these things they take time. It's a very slow cook. Yeah. But sometimes it's like <laughs> big blast of fire comes and everything is singed. Yeah. You know, uh, we can never. Uh, it's simply happening. It's a very natural, a God natural uh, unfolding in one way. But at some point, even the unfolding becomes sort of like superficial for you. 
you know, the interest in the unfolding. Mm. You see? And that's not cursing the unfolding. Mm. It's just we are using it to, in a sense, everything in the life is a mirror reflecting the true. And the mirror is keep on reflecting more and more subtle things. In this mirror, you can see the most subtle, 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 until actually there's no duality in the in the in the mirror, you know. Mm. But it, I feel it takes it does take um, um, time. Right? Time is also part of the story of consciousness, you know, development and maturity and all of this. You know, it's not that. Oh, we start off so low, and in, in a sense, we can look at it from a worldly perspective. But it seems like the whole thing, on every level, including hell, uh, the supreme is there, somehow taking care of the beings. You know, some some are destined to be in a hellish state forever. We, we, I don't know what forever is. You know, for as long as they, they suit their role, mm. but because uh, the nature of movement is always to evolve. You know, to a certain place, and even to to evolve and then to back to to, to an ending is is seems alive. Mm. That some things must spend their time and return to whatever their source is yeah. in in the play of time, yeah. inside the timeless. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and some things just over over spending time with you and in satsang. What I'm noticing is that the I know certain roads are gonna s s end up in a dead end, you know, mm. certain roads within the mind. Mm. And something is uh, um, not entertaining, uh, taking any subtle road inside the mind towards mm. a something, you know. Mm -hmm. And the consciousness is more staying staying home, I don't know. How yeah, to say. it's simmering. Simmering. Because yeah. for a while we are on fast coke and, and then somehow it's just sort of simmering, something yeah. is simmering. But even the simmering, there's an awareness of the simmering. Yeah. But it feels much more, more, you know. It's like uh, some some plants give a bad smell, yeah. and some things give a very nice smell, yeah. and it becomes a very nice fragrance. Yeah. This simmering, yeah. mm -hmm. it feels uh, somehow a harmony is there. Yeah. At some point, you can even see this. You can even see harmony in a disharmony. You know. Yeah. It's a strange thing. You say, wow, wow, why should that be happening? And something accepts it, it, it because it needs to happen. Yeah. You know? Does that mean we should do nothing about something you see that seems that? Well, if it moves inside the body and it wants to use this body to participate in changing the course of a, an action, then it will come. If it's coming a lot through the mind, it also will come because that's where. That's where the energy wants to flow, either through mind or in spirit or in form. You know, it finds its way, and it's so excellently wise. You know, it never makes mistake. So any mistake is only made in the mind. And it's amazing. This father, this supreme. <laughs>